I'm here with Martin Schreier, application specialist at Malvern Analytical, and we're going to discuss powder X-ray diffraction. You've got two pills. Why? Well, I've got a bit of a headache, so I was wondering what to take, and yeah. Do you look very similar? They are the same, actually. So both of them are ibuprofen. That's a chemical, so it's not a brand or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm advertising here, and if I take this one, it will take 10 minutes until I start feeling the pain relief. If I take the other one, it will take me about 40 minutes. But they are the same, so what's the difference? Chemically, they are literally the same. So if you do some spectroscopy on it, you'll find that they are more or less pure. Uh, ibuprofen, also if you dissolve them um, and do gas chromatography, or uh, well, not gas chromatography, uh, 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 liquid chromatography, you'll find they are the same. So the density, also pretty much the same. We have roughly the same volume. Um, you could particle size them. You'll find that the particle size is also the same. So we are talking here about bioavailability, but we don't have a good explanation for that. Mm. And bioavailability, it's a big word, but it, what it really means is how easily does it dissolve in water. Mm -hmm. And actually, we can control that by the way the molecules are packed. Yeah, and bioavailability matters because you and I are how many percent water? 70%, 70 I believe. 70%, so roughly. that's why it matters, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, I take them away because, well, my headache has gone away just like that. Mm -hmm. um, in, in any case, what is different is how we pack the molecule. So, let's think that this is my molecule and this is another molecule at the same time. And we put them on top of each other. That so, how be... they're stacked is different. Yeah. And we could also imagine But it's stacked in a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we do that and we fill up three-dimensional space, most of the time we end up with a regular pattern. Now you can see that if you go at home, you take tennis balls and you uh, put them into a confined space and uh, uh, try to pack them as efficiently as mm -hmm. possible, you'll find up they end up with some regular stacking pattern, actually with one of two stacking patterns. And this is what we call polymorphism. Ah. Now, which means different, uh, it's simply a different form <laughs> or multiple forms. You can also relate it to Mikado, right? The game, so where they're stacked. Yes. Simply. And the Mikado analog I like, uh, like very much because uh, the idea of Mikado is how easily you can take up one Mikado stick without moving any other. Yeah. And that's a sort of a situation when you are dissolving something, you want to as easily as possible to take off something. Yeah. And that is something that can be controlled uh, by packing them in different things in different ways. And that's literally the secret that we need to unravel. And now the thing is, how can we see the difference? Chemically and spectroscopically, they are the same or at least almost the same. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we need something to probe regular structures. Yeah. And there's a little experiment that people can do at home. So, you have a laser pointer. Mm -hmm. You have one of those good old uh, old fashioned DVDs or, or CDs. DVDs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, you point the laser pointer at the CD. Mm -hmm. And the CD has very regular spacings, yes. just about a micron apart or something. And when the laser beam bounces off, you'll get a, literally a pattern on, the, on a white paper. Uh, and this is what we call a diffraction pattern. Ah. And the reason for so the, the pattern on the paper is the diffraction pattern. Yes. Okay. The pattern on the paper is the diffraction pattern. And from that, if you collect enough, you could reconstruct the entire DVD, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> and So the secret is in the pattern, that's what you're saying? Yeah, the secret is in the pattern. And you can tell, for example, the DVD apart from a CD, mm -hmm. because the spacing is very different between the two. So how does this relate back to the pills? 
Well, we need something that uh, probes crystal structures the same way. So crystal structures, like a CD or DVD, a very regular pattern in 3D space. So if I have a radiation which has roughly the spacings of atoms mm -hmm. in wavelength and irradiate uh, a crystal with it, I get a diffraction pattern. Yeah. And that is how we analyze uh, these materials. So we have well, millions of little crystals mm -hmm. and we put them on some kind of a plate and we irradiate them with some radiation, not any radiation. And it happens that X-ray radiation is the ideal tool for that. That's why we are using it, not because it's nice and dangerous and expensive to sell. It's just because it's the only radiation really that is suitable for the purpose. Yeah. Okay, so powder X-ray diffraction can tell the difference between one ibuprofen and the other. Yes. Okay, and why does it matter? Why does it matter? Well, because you want to have your pain relieved as fast as possible. It's one possibility. Mm -hmm. So, and the other possibility is that, well, pharma companies have picked up, or, or of course, on the importance of polymorphism. Mm -hmm. So they are patenting specific polymorphs so uh, that others cannot use it. And if they find, let's say, 3% of yes. their polymorph in the other persons, well, when they start suing and when there's a lot of money involved uh -huh. here. So uh, some people make, must make sure that they don't, in quality control, that they don't have a certain polymorph in it. Others want to make sure that they have a certain polymorph. Okay. And that's... And that's the story of powder x-ray diffraction? Sort of. Well, and how it works is very simple. You have your sample on a rotating tray and you have on one side an x-ray source and a detector and you make a v-shaped movement i cannot really good do it very well with my hand and you collect then a pattern and that is mostly a very very flat pattern when you have a spike another spike and yet another spike and then you have um, a huge database. So typically databases are about a million or something. Yeah. Much larger than many other databases. So that's uh, the power of powder diffraction, really. And when you right away find what you have got and how much of different things you have got. Hopefully in these cases, just one stuff where I don't want to, have to be taking something else if I take one of these bills. And when most solid materials are crystalline, which is uh, very convenient uh, for us. So we can use this for really extremely different industries. So mining industry, we want to know which minerals they have got. Cement, they want to know what is the uh, composition of a cement, does it change or something. Yeah. And uh, uh, battery materials, here they want to typically see something else. So how the patterns change as the batteries charge and discharge and um, how uh, stable that is. So if it stays stable within 10,000 cycles or if it's stable, the battery sh uh, shows signs of aging or even worse. Mm -hmm. And all these are things where powder diffraction is used, uh, used. So it's really an application with a huge number of people being interested in it. Okay, and if I want to know more about powder x-ray diffraction, where do I go? Well, perhaps to Malvern Panalytical. Okay, well, thank you very much.